The country of Wales has a distinctive culture, including its own language, customs, politics, holidays, and music. A distinctive Welsh tradition that dates to the 17th century is the Welsh love spoon, which is a decoratively carved wooden spoon presented as a gift of romantic intent. While similar customs exist in different parts of the world, the true love spoon is Welsh in origin. This Welsh tradition of carving love spoons as tokens of affection and love continues in Wales today at the Thomas Family Love Spoon Workshop, situated close to the seaside resort of Tenby in Pembrokeshire. Meet father and son, Carrie and Dave Thomas, who share the history and techniques of designing and hand carving Welsh love spoons. I mean, basically, the uh, love spoon tradition dates back to the 17th century, so the earliest dated love spoon in Wales is dated 1667. Um, the spoons then you've got in here, these are our own family collection. So there's one love spoon for every year since 1969. They've all got their own stories. So uh, to give you an idea, basically the first one that we carved is that one there. That was carved by um, Dad on the day of the investiture, gentleman here. He had the day off and he used that one then to pop the questions. His mum and dad is their engagement spoon. So it sounds a romantic story, but the truth is he was saving himself from buying the engagement ring. So that's what he did. Basically, love spoons then, um, they were given, you know, going back to the 17th century, they would have been given as tokens of affection, but also, you know, we, the, the actual origin of it, very difficult to say exactly what it is, but we believe that they would have been used as practical cooking style utensils. And then over the years then, they became more decorative and less functional. So what we do know is that um, the carvers would put messages into their love spoons. So that's what you've got here then. You've got messages in all of these spoons. So uh, an example like that one there, that is mum and dad's wedding spoon. So one idea, you've got two bowls that are smooth. You've got two that are rough. It's for the rough, the smooth of married life. Very naive, but there we go. And a love spoon like that, it's a little bit of a break from the tradition because you've got brass bells and you've got the birds inserted. Didn't realise at the time, another thing you should do, you should really carve your spoon from one single solid wood. Didn't realise at the time. After this then, uh, all of the other spoons that you can see on display, all of these, uh, they've all been carved from one single solid block of wood. So all of the others in the collection. But you can put all sorts of stories, all sorts of messages into your love spoon. So to give you some examples, uh, one like that one there, that's got um, a lot of the uh, traditional symbols. So you've got things like links, and you've also got seeds, two traditional symbols uh, for recording the birth of a child. So um, that one there, it was carved back in 1977, the year my brother Benjamin was born. It's got Benjamin's name on the one side of the love spoon, my eldest brother Matthew's name across the other side, Emmanuel down the centre on the front there, meaning God with us. But a love spoon like that, it's all carved from one single solid block. There's around about um, 70 to 80 hours spent working on the love spoon like that and the wood then you use the piece of tea. Uh, and when it comes to the wood, you can use different timbers. Sailors used to carve them. We link the tradition with sailors and seaports, so they would have access to wood from all around the world. But we're basically what they describe now as an eco-business because um, we recycle a lot of timber from things like carpentry joinery firms, things like double glazing companies. Uh, we get it from our own tree. We've got our own tree planting project where we planted over 100 trees in the last um, two or three years as well. So we do basically we do a lot of recycling and we've got links to things like the tree surgeons. Uh, one like that one there, that was done back in 1984. Um, Bob Geldof set up Live Aid Band Aid. So you've got the sun on one side, you've got the rain on the other side, saying that we're fortunate having more of a balance of both sun and rain as opposed to Ethiopia at the time. The main interpretation of the word grace as God's riches available in Christ for everyone. How do we see God's riches? We simply open our hearts. And that one there then plays Amazing Grace. Yeah. 
we carved that one back in 2007, the longest love swim in the world. So that's in excess of 27 feet long. There's approximately then 300 hours spent working on a love swim like that one. And again, all carved from one single solid piece. But it's a good example. The story behind that one was based on life's journey. There's the double deck of us, uh, for example. That was for a gentleman who, um, he actually lives on the road. He met his wife on a double deck of us. So it's how you, you can record things on there. And we made a spoon then with a double deck of us on for them. So you can, you can use it to record all sorts of different things. Another example over there, where you've got the set of keys. So the, the idea behind that one there, the theme was based on the idea of what is the key to life. Um, so uh, sadly, it was the year 1986 when the Space Shuttle Challenger exploded. So that was one of the themes we sort of um, uh, put in forward. Is that the key to life? Space exploration, further in boundaries, that sort of thing. Is that the key to life? Um, you've then got a little love spoon on there. So is it your, your hobbies, your interests, the things that you enjoy doing? Is that the key to life? There's a star, so for being famous, being on television, a pound sign, so money and possessions, a heart on there with a, with a family, uh, so is it your family, your friends, on the other side a mirror, so is it yourself, and you've got a cross on there as well, so is it your faith, your religion, your belief. So that was the idea, um, basically saying that we're fortunate because a lot of us can choose what the key to life is. When it comes to the tradition itself, because it dates back to the 17th century, most of what you sort of read ar around the tradition has been written since the 1960s. So what's happened, um, basically, has been like a development of what, what we would sort of refer to truisms. So, for instance, you, we, we refer to links and seeds as traditional symbols. Um, and we believe that they were linked to the number of children a person wanted, or this sort of thing, or recording the number of children that they had. It's not to mean that that is absolute solid fact, because they didn't write down what they meant. It's from people interpreting what they believe it meant. Good example of it, there's a, a lot of the early love spoons are up in St. Fagans, which is the National Folk Museum of Wales. And uh, they got one love spoon there, and the interpretation was the hope for seven children. It's got a single seed inside a chamber, five small links, and then a larger link. So naturally, because of the seven, when you put the total together, one seed, five links, and another one, it, it's seven it comes to. So they put down that it's the hope for seven children. Personally, when I interpreted it, I looked at it, and I thought it was a wind-up. I thought it was somebody getting married, and the ball and the links represent a ball and chain. So I actually think it was somebody messing about, and they carve the couple getting married, they carve them a ball and chain. So you'll get these sort of ideas where it'll be said, this is what it means, but it's open to interpretation. So in example, you'll get a lot of nautical themes. So for instance, you'll see anchors. Now an anchor represents stability, putting down your roots, this sort of thing. Those are some of the traditional ideas what it means. But it can also represent, depending on the person, a love of the sea and the fact that a person, they may work on ship and that sort of thing. And because the sailors used to carve them, they were carving things that were around them. Uh, you get another uh, symbol, um, a soul sign. It comes from um, Egyptian mythology, something, something along those lines. Now that, it, it's basically, again, because it's not the sailors, they would have travelled and they would have seen different things. And basically they thought that would be nice and appropriate on a love spoon and that's when it became then a traditional symbol and it just looks like two little commas. So the, the, the nice thing with the tradition is open to interpretation and um, it, it evolves. I wrote my master's dissertation then on, on the love spoon and in terms of um, my course it was heritage tourism. So the love spoon where I would sort of define it, 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 it evolves and it, 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 was a, it was a reflection of part of Welsh culture and it, it has evolved over the years. Styles have changed, um, design has changed, ideas have changed, but in its essence it, it is a reflection of Welsh society and of the people of Wales. Traditional love spoons have a lot of nautical themes. In more recent times, you'll have seen trends for more Celtic design. Now, Celtic design is a modern development in the Welsh love spoon, something that we use a lot ourselves. But it identifies with us as a nation strongly because we're of Celtic heritage. Ireland, Scotland, Wales, we all have Celtic links. 
So that has been adapted into the Love Spoon tradition, and it's sort of a fusion of Celtic design and traditional Love Spoon design. So you're bringing the two things together to evolve the tradition and to give it more of a strong Welsh identity. So, uh, for instance, then, in terms of a lot of the spoons that we do then, the dragon is, is, is something that is quite iconic um, in terms of uh, Wales, and also the daffodil. We would use those symbols on a regular basis in our design because, it, 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 again, you're, you're using that identity and marrying it together with something else that has a unique and strong Welsh identity. So what you're, what you're doing is you're bringing those things in together to really um, create something that, that really does reflect the people of Wales. That is a love spoon, right? But it's shaped like a label. In Wales, we used to have a traditional food called cowl. Spelled C A W L, cowl. It's um, a lamb or ham. Yeah. Super broth. It's vegetables, um, all sorts of potatoes, um, and then the meat is either lamb or ham. And the, they would cut. It was called cowl, and there were special cowl spoons, and that's usually the shape, but much more scooped, and they were used for serving the cow. So I think the love spoon developed from eating and serving utensils, like the cow spoon, okay? They were probably decorated with the people's initials, names, and then occupations, and I think that's probably how the love spoon developed. Useful utensils that were given to the young people years ago, because they had loves, they had spoons thousands of years ago. But that's what I think the Welsh like developed on. You've got, um, as Dave says, it dates back to the 17th century. These are typical sort of examples of what would have been made. Um, sometimes you, you see a set, a, a knife, a fork and a spoon. That one is dated 1843. And I would guess that it being authentic you know, um, it, it was made somewhere around about that time, okay? Because nobody would have made all that um, and then put that kind of date on it. You know what I mean? That's got to be authentic. You asked how do we start to make a love spoon? What sort of inspires you? Because obviously um, you came with Springs in 1972 and from there on, there's a Christian message that we put into the spoons. We have two languages in Wales, so you're mixing and blending. That's what you're doing with a love spoon, okay? You're mixing and blending the two hearts together. You're mixing and blending, in this case, the two languages that we have. My wife comes from Tenby, which is Denbich Piscod, a fort or a town of little fish. So there's all the fish on there. My village, Fun and Tav, or Taft's Well. So you're mixing and blending the two places that we come from. Munich, down the stem, with the Star of David and a small cross, the year the Olympic Games were spout, when Jewish people were killed. So we use the spoons like a diary, recording personal things, but more general events as well. It is definitely, it's a form of cultural heritage from Wales.